afternoon, and I want to thank everyone for taking the time out of the day to come here today. Uh, go ahead and introduce uh, the people at the table there. Over here I have Chief John Smith, Springfield Township Police Department. I am Sergeant Eric East with the Springfield Township Police Department. To my right, I have Chief Brian Dressler with the Doylestown Police Department. And to his right, I have Sergeant Kevin Milborn with the Doylestown Police Department. I'm going to go ahead and open up the uh, conference with a uh, brief statement. At approximately 4 a.m. on Tuesday, August 11th, our dispatch center was contacted by the Doylestown Police Department to make a notification at 1807 Moonlight Drive. The notification request was in reference to the apparent suicide in Doylestown of 44-year-old Thomas Abshire. An officer responded to the residence and attempted contact. The residence was dark, quiet, and had no visible signs of anything out of the ordinary. After several attempts, the officer cleared the scene with no contact being made. At approximately 0600 hours, two officers, along with the supervisor, again responded to 1807 Moonlight Drive to again attempt contact. With improved lighting conditions during this time, one of the officers was able to see inside the residence through a space between a curtain and a window. That officer saw what he believed to be blood on the floor of the residence. At that point, the decision was made to make entry into the residence to check the welfare of any occupants. Entry was made through an unlocked window and the three officers conducted a search of the home. It was noticed inside the home that the burners on the gas stove were all burning on high and that there were charred items on the stove, as if there was an attempt to start a fire. The officers continued their search of the residence and unfortunately discovered the body of an adult female in a hallway. EMS was summoned to the scene, as were detectives from the Springfield Township Police Department, the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation, and the Summit County Medical Examiner's Office. After vigorous investigation, the identity of the female victim was identified as 44-year-old teacher for behavioral handicapped students, Jennifer M. Wazel Abshire. Jennifer was transported to the Summit County Medical Examiner's Office, where an autopsy will be conducted later today. It is our confident belief that Jennifer was the victim of a murder-suicide perpetrated by her husband of 13 years, Thomas Abshire. With this information, we are convinced that there is no current threat to the public safety in regards to this incident. The motive for this horrific crime is unknown, as are Mr. Abshire's intentions after he committed the crime. Those aspects, among others, are continued to be investigated. We would like to thank the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation, the Summit County Medical Examiner's Office, and the Doylestown Police Department for their tremendous efforts in assisting us with this investigation. Lastly, but certainly not least, we would like to express our sincere condolences to the families, friends, and loved ones affected by this senseless tragedy. Our thoughts and prayers go out to them all. At this time, we would like to, uh, I'll turn it over to uh, Chief Dressler, and we'll show the video from the traffic stop. You can stand up if you want, Chief. Okay. Is it okay if he stands up, or you, you guys want him here? I can probably see it from here. Just do it from here. Is this okay? You notice my, my officer is southbound on Porter Street in the village of Doylestown, and uh, so she's looking at the van, which is um, northbound. Uh, they were both stopped at a red traffic light. That light was still red when you see the van proceed through the traffic light. She does a U-turn to initiate a traffic stop. You can see that the vehicle is not necessarily speeding up uh, to get away. He's traveling at a normal rate of speed for that road. She initiate, initiates her overhead lights. The vehicle's not stopping, but he's not, uh, 
it's not speeding up either. At some point, it's hard to see with the overhead flashes, but the hazard lights for the van are initiated. Right about there. And now you can see the van begin to go left of center. And it comes to rest up on the tree line here. Uh, my officer suspects that perhaps this could be a medical emergency situation, so she notifies dispatch not only of the traffic stop, but that there could potentially be a medical emergency. As she's relaying that information, um, she's uh, beginning to make her approach to the vehicle. You're going, to, you're going to observe her uh, approach the vehicle from, from the passenger side. Um, there were some items in the passenger side seat that obscured the view of the driver. Uh, and so then she'll go around the back of the van uh, and attempt to make contact with the driver. When she gets to the driver's side, uh, she notices a, a, a male slumped over. Uh, at that point, she does uh, advise dispatch to have the squad, the emergency squad, en route. And then it's upon further inspection that she notices a firearm placed on his lap and eventually a gunshot wound to his head. Uh, the driver we now know to be uh, Mr. Tom Sabshire. That's pretty much uh, the rest of it. You'll see the, the emergency response and, and, and go from there, but that's pretty much um, all of the video that I think is really pertinent. Um, at, at some point uh, during this, uh, we do ask uh, dispatch to uh, notify Springfield uh, Township Police Department to make a notification, an emergency notification uh, to his next of kin. So we were able to find out where he lived. And so we, uh, at that point, we had asked uh, them to make that notification. And I'll let them uh, talk about that. The only thing I would add um, to our involvement is that uh, that later that morning, um, there was a, a boat on a trailer discovered further down that same road, a couple miles further down that same road in the direction uh, that Mr. Abshire uh, had been going. And um, the, uh, the trailer had a wheel that was off of it and uh, had obviously come to a kind of a, a halt because of that. It was off to the side of the road. Uh, we had run the plate, um, the license plate on the boat and the trailer and realized that it had also belonged to Mr. Thomas Abshire, so we took that into evidence as well. Um, I would like to thank uh, the Springfield Township Police Department uh, for working with us uh, on this and uh, assisting us with this. Uh, Wayne County Sheriff's Office, who did uh, come and, uh, and back up Officer Gerber, uh, Bureau of Criminal Investigation, uh, for their hard work on this, and, uh, and then uh, the staff at Town Police Department for, for aiding in this as well. Okay, I'll open it up for any questions, if anybody has any questions they would like to ask. Has the police been called to investigate in the past or anything like that? Uh, we have been called, uh, the, the last time uh, that we were called to that uh, residence, um, well, actually twice before, uh, back in, uh, in July of this year we were called, but it wasn't a, a dispute between the two parties involved. Uh, it was Mr. Abshire wishing to file a report 
uh, referenced some identity fraud that he thought was occurring. Um, and the time before that was in May of this year. We did respond for a domestic dispute that ended up being just an argument uh, between the two of them over, uh, I believe I was told it was a cell phone. It was just a, a verbal argument between the two of them, Not, uh, nothing physical or violent. Uh, it was hard to tell what they were. Uh, there were some, some paper items on there. You could tell that it had already turned to ash. Um, there were actually throughout the home, throughout the course of their investigation, um, they had found several spots where they had believed where he had possibly tried to start some type of fire uh, with small items inside the home, uh, wood, uh, paper products, stuff like that. Was there a suicide note or any type of evidence that might lead you to believe what was going on? Uh, no, not at this time. Uh, nothing's been located or found. Um, uh, they did a, a search of the house and also of the vehicle and were not able to recover any uh, type of note or any answers to why this occurred. Do you know where he was heading? You know, that's, that's a, a big question for us. Um, I, I'll kind of refer back to the boat that was found. Uh, initially, uh, the plans were for him uh, and Jennifer to go on a fishing trip. Uh, that's what family members were, were told and uh, they believed that they would have been back later um, the evening um, that, that this happened. Um, uh, one of the family members actually lived in the area and noticed uh, activity around the home at 2 a.m. Um, believing that it was them getting ready to go on their boating trip, thought not much about it, uh, nothing else about it. Um, so. The boat was already attached to the vehicle. Uh, when he left the home, um, the boat was still attached to the vehicle. So we don't know if there ended up being a problem with the, because it did have a, was it a broken axle, Chief, or was it a flat tire? The tire had actually come off. The, come off the, the tire axle. had come off. So there, there was a problem with the boat, um, and he lost the boat. So we don't know if that put a damper into his plans either. Uh, we really don't know at this time. It's all speculative. Um, the autopsy has not been completed. That's going to be completed today, so we do not have a cause of death. Um, however, uh, based on preliminary investigation by the detectives at the scene, uh, it was noticed that there were multiple stab wounds on the victim. This, based, on based on our investigation, we could probably just give it a, you know, a window of, you know, anywhere between, um, you know, the activity was seen around the house at 2 a.m. and he didn't leave, leave there till uh, probably around that time and until we actually got inside the home, which was 6 a.m. So if he left around 2, I would probably say it would have to have been between dusk and, and 2 a.m. that this occurred. The family had seen him. The, the family had had seen him in between that time. Any other questions? Can you repeat, yeah. I had an issue with my battery. Can you repeat the answer you gave about the wife and I think you said multiple stab wounds? I don't know exactly what you said, so that's what it is. Sure. One second. Another battery. Microphone. <laughs> Uh, yes, the uh, preliminary investigation um, by the detectives on the scene noticed multiple stab wounds on the victim. Any, any other questions, gentlemen, please? Okay, again, I want to thank everyone for taking the time to come today, and, and again, our condolences to the families involved in this. Uh, it's a tragic uh, incident all around, and uh, we should all keep them in our thoughts.
Thank you.